Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to today's episode where I have the pleasure of hosting a man of many talents, Mr. Phil Cruz. Get ready to dive into his experiences in theater, television, and film because the conversation starts now. Welcome to the Hobson Hour, the podcast where we explore the stories that shape our lives. Each week, your host, Justin Hobson, will sit down with a special guest and talk about the only things that really matter. Family, friends, education, and the arts. So sit back and enjoy the ride here on The Hobson Hour. I made notes so I don't sound like a complete idiot today. Hey, hey, sometimes you gotta go with the notes. You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah it's uh, I, I like to keep it easy, I like to keep it easy as if we're just hanging out, you know, uh, having a drink, me having a drink of water, you having a drink of uh, alcohol. <laughs> I've actually some tea and some tea going today. Oh, OK. okay. I, thought about, I thought about pouring a nice, nice stiff cocktail, but who knows where this conversation would go. It, it, it could go it could go many places. And uh, let's just jump off from from that little note there. I mean, I've known you uh, since the first year of college at San Diego State, which was 2006. And for that, yeah, for our, us listeners. Um, just a little 411 about Mr. Phil Cruz. If you were ever in a situation where you were in a department and there was like the really good looking, talented, multifaceted women, you know, swooning over, that wasn't me, unfortunately. That was Phil. <laughs> and there was a few. There was a few. There was you and there was Nick McElroy. And God rest, may he rest in peace. We we uh, we lost Nick uh, this past year, I believe, or I think it's been a little over a year now. Anyway, but yeah. Phil was the other one. Um, yeah, I kind of want to just jump in, Phil. I mean, I I want to know where this whole thing for you started because I have never not known you to be an artist from playing music to acting on main stage, musical theater, and then you're, you know, going to get your master's in in that field, and then coming back to LA and kind of taking another term and jumping into the film medium, film and television. And now you're producing, you've got your own film company. What, where did this whole thing start for you? Because I know it didn't start with you uh, jumping off into the arts uh, until, really officially until college. So where did that inspiration kind of happen for you? Well, first off, Justin, don't sell yourself short, man. You felt, um, you made a lot of women feel um, very strongly about a lot of things. Um, and that's, that's something to be said. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, uh, geez. Yeah. College was a, um, college was amazing, but yeah, it started like, honestly, when I was in second grade, Mm. And my elementary school had an assembly where we either dressed as a bear or we dressed as a, a reindeer and we did some like Christmas show for the school. And it was a lot of song and dance and stuff like that. And I remember during one song, it was called Gimme, Gimme Santa, Gimme All Your Stuff. And uh, me and my buddy Jeremy Hohengarten busted out from the chorus line during like the solo. Well, there was no solo. It was just a musical break. <laughs> we went out there and we were busting out dance moves we had seen from TV and just we were just ripping up the stage. And um, it was not part of the show, but I think it was at that moment my parents were like, oh, boy, we've got we've got something on our hands. I'm not sure what it is. And I think it was after that moment. I remember going home just like, man, dude, that was what a release, like what a cool feeling that was you know and then yeah then after that you know i just i think i told my mom i liked it and she kind of found a local show and got me into it and and i I, uh, I gotta i gotta say i mean you your parents are 
I mean, you get a lot from your parents, but I would say your personality uh, on the whole is a lot more extroverted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like to think of myself as an outgoing introvert. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm actually weirdly very, very introverted. Um, right. right. Which I get right. from my mom. My mom is very, very introverted. And on my dad, you've met my dad. Yes. He's he's a tall, spitting image of me um, or vice versa. I guess. Right, right. So, you know, uh, genes go. But uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I get I get the best of both worlds. You know, I mean, I need I, I recharge by myself, but. I, Man, you know, do I love to just cause a scene and stir a crowd and you know it and it and it's fun. I could only imagine because your your parents are I wouldn't say I, I hope they wouldn't take offense if I said they were more uh, along the like intellectual type. I mean like you you've got yeah I'll just say I'll compare them with my family, right? You know, sure. you've got some uh members of the Hobson clan and the Quit clan and uh, if you were looking to, yeah, you know, uh, go cow tipping, <laughs> they would be your crew, you know, but <laughs> God love my family. My family is awesome. Um, but, but your, your family, I mean, your mom and your dad, they're a little bit more of an, I, I don't know. I think they're just, they're, they're very logical. Um, I could see them taking deliberate steps in life and then here comes second grade. And then all of a sudden Phil Cruz is just doing this and that. And they're just kind of in the back of their mind, kind of like, Huh. <laughs> and you know, bless their hearts. They didn't throw me into military school or anything. They um they supported me with yeah. my um theatrical endeavors, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, that and that's that's the cool thing. They support. I mean, sure. My dad, you know, he worked for the government. He was very he was a good person. He worked yeah. for the environment. He, you know, but their you know, he was a fisherman. He was also they they go on hikes on a lot of, you know, um, you know, slower activities, which to me, I'm like, oh, I need adrenaline. You know, I want to like dirt bikes. I want to get up on stage. I want that rush of life, which, you know, they're just kind of like, all right, no, I guess this is, this is it. This is our, this is our child. Phil, Phil is the kind of just listener. This is Phil's the kind of guy, the last, one of the last camping trips that I went, not this past one in the desert, but when we went to Sequoia national park and we were yeah. in, we found, we went on this beautiful little hike on this trail. <clears throat> we found this pool of water and this rock that was just massive sticking up in the air. And Phil was just like, I think I'm going to do a backflip off that <laughs> land of that like three foot shallow pool. I think I can do that. And you know what? It's like he did. And I knew he was going to do it. And like, you know, like I, we were all there with our ladies and everything. And everyone was like, damn that Phil. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, but it's so good. It, was, it was majestic. And that actually reminds me of the time when we did grapes of wrath in, in college, you right, know, right, right, right. you played the child. Yes. You played <laughs> as always. I'm, I've never not played your younger brother or younger anything in any production yes. that we've had. And I have a slightly little bullied action from yours truly, Mr. Phil Cruz. But it just comes off so genuine. <laughs> oh, it just feels so good to bully you, Justin. You're like the younger brother I never had, you know. Because I was yeah. the younger brother. So yeah, was... yeah. Well, and and uh, I I was too. But uh, unfortunately, I think I uh, inherited uh, smaller genes than you. So the uh, ability for you to punch me around. Not... But I, yeah, I tried to reciprocate. Um, but well, it was it was kind of amazing. They both had us in that program because we could be brothers, man. Like we are 100% brothers and we kept getting cast as brothers. Yep. Yeah. 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 Phil, Phil has, uh, two older brothers. I believe it is two. Older brothers. Yeah. Two older, yeah, brothers. two older brothers. I have four older brothers. So that camaraderie that you get, if you're so lucky to have brothers like that is, um, and I don't know if that's something you inherited from your brothers or cause I know you had a pretty strong group of, of friends as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but w we definitely, carry that on uh in college and and even to this day as you know mid mid to late 30s men um but i kind of want to i want to take it to the next step so you you gave us the story about second grade parents are kind of like hmm, okay i gotta throw you in some something but you know again coming back to that point i know you didn't i know you didn't go into college uh with that as your major so where at in in the in that line or that progression for you 
did that change? Because you're, say, let's just say, for example, day in the life, your senior year of high school, you've got to make some choices and kind of paint that picture. What did you choose and why? And then how did that kind of all go to go to poop? Well, it's, it's, yeah. All went to a big steaming heap of uh, where I am now. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but, uh, but no, I mean, okay. And after that, yeah, I had done conservatories every summer. I had been in almost a play every single year after that, like acting and, and drama and theater was a huge part of my life because for me, it was a sense of, of play, man. It allowed me to play with, with other people and it just felt good to be able to you know, collaborate with kids my age and like just hang out and create something and, and tell stories. And, you know, I remember we had this lady come over to one of my friend's house and it was like an improv class we did once a week. And she would lug over this trunk full of hats and clothes and just accessories and all this bullshit. And we would do improv and we were like probably in fourth grade, you know? And I remember it, it just gave such a sense of, wonderment you know my mom used to read these books called uh i think it was like martin the great um i think it was writ uh written by the same guy who wrote the uh oh, lord of the rings it's uh oh yeah game of thrones <laughs> yeah uh, martin martin uh -huh. yeah, martin uh, we're, we're really going to display our intelligence here right now, <laughs> but I, I, I'm sure if you're listening, you know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep driving yeah, on here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So anyways, I, you know, my dad used to play violin to us when we went to sleep. So I had a lot of, um, time to sit and imagine and let my mind go crazy. So anyways, that was yeah. a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I get to, you know, cut to college and I just didn't think that was a viable option, um, getting a, a some degree in, in in theater or anything like that. So I was always good at math. For weirdly enough, I wasn't that good at English, but I was very good at math. So I was like, you know what? My dad was like, you know, engineering careers are very are very sought after. You can make a lot of money. They're very good. And I was like, oh, engineering. I like building shit. You know, like me and my friends would build stuff, we'd make things. And, you know, that's, that's my other career path. I wanted to be when I was a kid was an inventor. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an inventor. In fact, I remember hearing this, uh, advertisement on the radio is like, call in to get your free inventors kit. <laughs> La -da -da -da. And they would have, they would sell this inventors kit. And as a kid, I'm like, oh, inventors kit. Are you kidding me? This is awesome for free. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked my mom, I was like, mom, there's a free inventor's kit. They're giving it out for free. I got to get my hands on this. And um, we actually called in one day and she's like, yeah, yeah. How, how old is your son? It's like, he's, he's eight. She's <laughs> like, they're like, yeah. So what the inventor kit is, is a bunch of paperwork that allows you to patent shit. And I'm like, oh, okay. This oh, is, this isn't falling. like, you know, like uh, yeah. little hammers and eyeglasses right. and whatever you invent stuff. Yeah. So where I was going with that. Yeah. So I was like, well, well, real quick. It's so funny that you said that because I dude, I had that. And I don't know if this is just an artist thing, but like I also really wanted to be an inventor. My thing was just like, I want to create these wings where we can fly. I think it's a crime that we don't have wings to fly. You know, I mean, like we're in the 21st century. The, fuck, you know, like, come on, let's get it going. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, and I would always, always be thinking of things like forest fires. I'm like, well, why don't we have all these like little mini drones? I mean, I guess I get still kind of do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's yeah. kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if that plays into just uh, a, a more creative mind or if you're a more, I don't know, right side versus left side. Yeah. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But anyway, sorry. I, I think it does. I, I yeah. think um, the, the, the drive to invent, the drive to create. Mm -hmm. comes from anywhere, wherever you have, like whatever tools you have. You Would you know, say uh, you access that part of your mind or your brain when you're, when you're digging into say, you know, you get cast and you're, you're kind of building this character up. Would you say that that lives in that area of invention, I guess, lives in the same wheelhouse of when you're actually creating character? It's funny, man. Cause a lot of that actually comes when I'm in 
and I'll say on stage because that's still the bulk of my life has been on stage. So yeah. w- when I get on stage and we start reading this thing, getting it up on its feet, that's when I feel like that's when all these all these little things come up and I, I was like, oh, that's good. And I just keep grabbing at these things and putting them in this character. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. F- weirdly enough, I know we're jumping way ahead, but it's when you get the costumes and the lights go down mm-hmm. that truly I feel like all of that boils up and can actually admit out from you, know, from you, I, you know? And I know I've said this a few times to you. There's a, there's a select view of her- few friends that I, I feel this way and Phil Phil kind of fits into this category of when when that those lights do go you know the house lights go down you know stage lights come up and boom action play you know it's going there's there's some people that go through this they just walk through this invisible something where once they're through it it's just like they're they're this completely different character I mean, you you don't see your friend Bill or you know whoever else that I have in my life that's kind of has this, but you really see this just just character. And I don't know if that's because you're such a physical actor. I mean, Bill's done so many different productions. I mean, one of the craziest things that I've seen him do is he had to take a fall off of a horse or something for a Shakespeare yeah. production. I mean, he's he's really really good with controlling or you you being able to control your body um and it's a pretty cool thing when you say that because i think you're right like you get to that rehearsal and you kind of you, you get the, the the gist of it you know and you've had that and i love rehearsal i mean we've done plays where i'm just it's so much fun especially when you're cast with someone like yourself but then the lights and that the show really starts on you know opening night and you almost get to see just a different version of this person it's like if you're a dragon ball z fan you see (laughs) you see someone going from just a normal state to super saiyan you know and and uh and not everyone can do it i i i i think it is a very rare thing and i think you have it and i'm sure if you look back to when you did that first production in second grade or whatever uh i'm sure your parents saw it too because i have not witnessed or i haven't heard anyone else say that everyone said yeah Bill goes through this weird thing and i don't really it's not like I'm seeing Phil anymore. It's like, it's kind of weird. I don't, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. It is weird. I don't, I can't quite explain it, but it, it is pretty cool to see an experience and feel. And I think that's what you do. You give us, you're the type of performer that gives us that, uh, those genuine, authentic feels in the moment because you're so present in your imagination in that world. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? That's, that's, that's cool. Well, first off, thank you for saying that, man. That, that means yeah. a lot that, you know, I can, transform like that i mean i I remember when i was a kid you know i just i I remember through high school and even through the start of um you know undergrad i I was under the mentality if you're not like bleeding by the end of the show you're not acting hard enough (laughs) like i was always getting hurt on stage because i was always throwing myself around doing prat falls whatever i mean doing the fourth grade show that we did for a few years like i would just throw myself across stage and just be bleeding or bruised or have like welts by the end of it and you know i was like that's that's and it's infectious though i mean to be able to be in a in a cast with with people like that or such as yourself i mean it makes you it's like it just makes you want to go to that next level or to kind of not let them down you know what i mean and and Mm -hmm. it just I don't know you're not even really thinking about that because like when we did grapes of wrath or i mean i know i had a very small part in that but like when we say desire under the elms uh that was such a physical like our scenes together with you bobby schieffer and me it was so physical that it was just fun you know and i think those were probably some of the for me the best moments in that whole production is because people you were physically so engaged in in that moment you know whereas Mm -hmm. i think sometimes when you're not using that you kind of get into you know brain brain yeah. land where you're you're overthinking the moment and it's like oh shit this is justin in the moment not even the character that, I'm playing, you know? that that is one of the worst hardest things when you somehow step out of the moment and you start yeah thinking of yourself in the moment yeah that's yeah. the worst because yeah. i think it's commit like 
truly, I believe it's, it's commitment. It's 100% full commitment into the world, into the circumstances with this character that you've spent all this time building. Yeah. And you take that and you use that as a vessel and you just, you're just in it, whether you're not even saying anything at all. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I was doing Einstein in grads. Sorry, I'm jumping all over. The place. No, 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 dude, jump, man. Skip. Yeah, Albert jump. Einstein in, in uh, uh, Picasso at the Le Panagiel in grad school. And I mean, one, what a f amazing character to be able to play like freaking Einstein. Right. Yeah. And I did all these things. I had my hair grow. I did all these things to make my hair like fluff up. But when I wasn't doing anything on stage or when I needed to like sort of shut off to let another part of the scene go, it was theater in the round. So we were on stage the whole time. I would count the hexagons on the floor of the tile and I would try to actually mathematically calculate how many were in the entire room by just sitting there. But that's, that's the kind of commitment to putting all of the energy you have on stage for people to watch because you know, I could have been sitting there thinking about what, you know, I'm going to have to eat after the show, right, like right, all right. these things. But there's a slight change when you watch someone, if they're actively doing something that is something in the character. I don't know if Einstein would actually do that. Maybe he would. Well, a damn good performer would. <laughs> well, <laughs> I heard it was, it was something, you know. You know was, yeah. Was, well, I, I, I was listening to an interview with Samuel L. Jackson. He said that same thing. He's like, whenever you're on stage or even if you're off stage, be active. Be ha have have something going, you know, and uh, it really plays off, especially with film, because it's such a, a visual tight medium mm -hmm. compared to, mm -hmm. you know, the world, the stage that you have in theater. But it's just like you you get to really see that visually in the eyes and what's happening. And I think that plays true in theater as well. I think a lot of times people become kind of door hangers on set pieces. <laughs> You know what I mean? When when they're not engaged in the scene and you're just like, oh, wow. And and if it's not, if you have a couple people like that in the production and you're just sitting in it from an audience perspective, you're just like, hey, okay, well, there's the door hanger. You lose a little bit of this tangible energy that you can't explain. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. So I kind of want to plow plow forward here okay so sure. you you obviously made that transition um you know in college and you just said okay um i'm gonna take that leap i'm gonna i'm gonna jump into the theater department which you quickly i mean i mean it was like a fish to water i think you could probably say it's i i think you could honestly say acting and performance has never felt like you were swimming upstream i feel like you Kind of go with it a little bit yeah yeah, yeah that's it, it's always been my thing and i so i also played soccer in high school and i didn't have the same commitment for some reason on the field as i did right with acting i just didn't have like i just guess i didn't have that that bite or that drive in high school i mean i did when i was younger but in high school i was like whatever but i, I always had that when i got on stage i always had this just yeah burning desire and i was always i always felt like i was the younger one trying to be with the with everyone else like be with the big boys so i was always stepping up but I, I i loved it because you know i was i was constantly with people who were better than me and it just mm -hmm. felt so good um to be able to play off 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 people who were so brilliant well um so I'm cu I'm curious. So you know, I, I had this this worst kind of still in my question one here about your inspiration. <laughs> you know, no, no, and it's great because I mean that's why I was so excited to talk to you because I mean we could literally mm -hmm. just we can keep going. But I'm curious as then, do you think uh, it, honestly, do you feel like you have to continue at this state in your career because now you've you've done your you've done a lot of theater. And you went away from that for a while and you've been in film land for quite some time now. Do you feel that you have to find some new source of inspiration to keep doing that thing? Or is it still kind of that innate feeling of like, no, this is just kind of what I want to do. And maybe today is harder than 
yesterday or easier than yesterday, but there is real no inspiration. This is just who I am. Oof, that's uh I don't know. It's, it's a, kind of hard to unpack. A, the whale of a question there, <laughs> Mr. Hobson. Uh, to keep doing what I do, um, it's interesting, man. I mean, honestly, I always want to go back and do theater mm-hmm. because that's what orig- That's why I originally fell in love with acting, and that honestly gives me the most gratification. The um, being with a live audience, being with a cast who's, who's creating something in the moment at the time. Um, well, and that feeling or that connection you have with an audience when you're doing a play versus when you're on set in front of a whole crew, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. You're definitely performing for that crew. And, you know, it, I mean, some of those people who are on set, we enjoy it <laughs> from an audience mm-hmm. perspective. But they're also like, okay, is he going to get it in this one take? Or are we going to need five takes? And God, his audio is kind of down. Oh, now his wardrobe's messed up. And here, here comes hair and makeup. And now he's got that fire wig. Oh, you know, so there's just like, yeah. they're not really enjoying it for performance sake. I mean, maybe one take, <laughs> maybe the first day. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's tedious. It's work. And that's what it is, is work. And I would yeah. love to just be able to go to set every day and work. I had the <laughs> chance to do that one time and it right. started to feel like theater because you're with the same people collaborating every day. Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of cuts and a lot of people walking around with cords and a lot of stuff going on, blah, 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 all this noise. And then all of a sudden action go. And all of a sudden you have to be in this little world, yeah. which is great because when you lock into something and make a scene, something incredible, it's just a small sliver of such such a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. cut and no one applauses and everyone goes off and, and does their own thing again. You know, yeah. so there's no real, there's not really much of a gratification until you, you get the thing up on a big screen somewhere. That's, yeah. that's pretty, that's something special. Um, so today's the first official full day um, of the, our union, sag uh being in a strike. Um, and honestly, dude, I'm the worst union member, uh, just because I'm, I don't really perform as much still stay up, you know, with all my, my dues and everything, but I had to look into that. Um, and I'm like, okay, what exactly, what, why are we going on strike and da, 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 da. and learning about AI and, you know, studios scanning the likeness of extras so that it was like a one and done, you know, kind of thing where it's like, cool, we got you. Uh, we'll use your likeness for eternity, but we'll pay you for the, your day rate of whatever it is now, like 160 or something, 172. Um, I'm curious as to, you know, earlier you said, you know, maybe I can make a career. I can make a good career out of this. You know, uh, I wonder mm-hmm. In the last few years of you being in this industry, has that changed for you in terms of um, your ability to 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 maintain a sustainable living off of the residuals that you've earned? Um, yeah, I have yeah. never made a living wage as an actor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I never mm-hmm. have. I mean, I've 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 done a few few productions that have paid handsomely for a short period of time. Yeah. But that's not a living wage. I mean, that's yeah. just yeah. a couple months of living, which then you have to go right back to where you started. And I've done, you know, everything around the book. I've, co- you know, booked little uh, roles here and there. Um, but they, you know, they just, it's a one time deal. You, you pay and you're done. Uh, I've done background for a long time. That's actually pretty steady. And that's actually some of the people I feel the worst for in this strike because they, they, they make a living doing background and they, but they have to go, they don't get residuals. So they have to show up every single day. Um, yeah. You know, and then when I was working on Lucifer, um, the residuals from that have been pretty good, but still not a living wage, you yeah. know? So you, and I, I always knew this, you know I mean? I always knew, they always say the starving actor, but you know, there's not a very large percentage of people who can actually, be make a living wage as an actor without traveling like crazy. I mean, a lot of the theater actors who do it, they're constantly traveling from town to town, 
following productions. I mean, it's a, it's a whole lifestyle that you can do, yeah. but it's, you have to be ready for it. You know, you have to sort of live that actor gypsy, you know, kind of lifestyle, unless you get so lucky to book something on a major television network. And then, you know, you're, you're doing pretty good, but it's, um, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's funny because I think we both have entered the industry around right around the same time near about. And, um, and maybe you feel this way too, but uh, you, when you get that residual check, it's, it's more like a, oh, yeah, it's a kind of like, it comes out of nowhere yeah. and it's like, oh my God, I got it. You know, whereas in reality, <laughs> maybe it should be more of like a consistency, even if it's a smaller amount. You know, something mm -hmm. that brings in because we've done. I mean, dude, I did with extra work, especially extra work and stand in work. I mean, I did. That was how I survived in L.A. for a good chunk of time. So and you're right. There is no residual off of that. And it's a struggle bus. I mean, a lot of actors, that's kind of what they would do in order to survive until they made it to those, you know, mm -hmm. got a consistent thing of co-stars, and guest stars going. Um damn it's not that easy and and it's funny because we, we we came into the the film world and this low pay kind of situation i suppose is our norm you know and it's been it's been kind of slowly going down especially with streaming you know and 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 the uh deduction of residuals due to streaming platforms you know um it's a very a fascinating thing because it's like oh these people are trying to fight for something that was and may never be again and you know that's kind of why this i think strike is so interesting because maybe 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 we'll get back to what what we did yeah or add i don't know and there, yeah yeah you're right and there's so many other variables than your standard contracts now because ai throws in to life in general i don't want to even get into that i mean that's yeah its own. yeah, yeah that's its own episode. I mean, AI is, can change drastically a lot of things. That's kind of yeah. terrifying for, well, I mean, people, we especially in the entertainment world where you can take AI and sort of manipulate mm -hmm. anything and everything. It's, it's kind of, it's mind blowing. There's so but, many uh, stories, and especially, I mean, we've got a friend who just recently lost her position um, due to, yeah. AI. I mean, it's happening all over and, 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 and touching everyone's world and to some degree. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of get, get your two cents on that. And you know what, what's a crazy story. Did, have you thought about one? Did, is there, is there one that, uh, kind of makes you laugh or every time you think about it? I'll just end you with this. Um, yeah, yeah. as it goes along with what we we're just talking about, making, making money as an, as a performer, as an actor, you know, uh -huh. So many different things. As you have, you've spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. We've all struggled. Um, you know, I'd love to talk about your selling vacuums door to door <laughs> for a while. That's that's just something just gets me going every single time. But I know we also both did costume characters, which is really funny. Yes. You were Elmo for a while. I think you did some other ones too, but. Uh, there's just nothing funnier than being just zipped up in a hot Elmo suit dealing with just little terrors, man. It just have just rented you to have their way with you for an hour. Yeah. 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 Well, you got to be the cool character. You were Darth Vader yeah. for, a yeah, good I mean, movie. I was the tall guy, so I got to be Darth Vader and yeah. it was cool. I mean, I was, I was training with these guys. It's just called sword play LA. So they, I got free, you know, fight training while I was doing, which I love fighting with swords, right? Yeah. But as a stipulation, you had to do costume characters for these kids' parties. And I was Vader since I was 6'2". So you get into this $1,000 Vader suit, like full-blown helmet, just layers upon layers of clothes. And obviously, all the birthday parties happen in the summer. And you go out to these places and it'd be like 100 degrees. And you're basically your sole purpose is just to survive for an hour without dying. So you're out there with usually... Skywalker or Princess Leia, <laughs> um, and you you do this whole kind of script thing you've you've done, and it's it's a whole hour. So we get down to Newport one time. We drive down to Newport. We get there. We do our normal change to strip down in the street. People are driving by. They're like, yeah, yeah, keep going. And I'm putting on your Vader underwear and all this <laughs> stuff. And boom, you get suited up. 
I'm like, all right. And it's this other new guy too. So he didn't know how to handle kids very well. So you had to walk like a quarter mile to this park. And we see him down there like, all right, you know, same thing. All right. Yeah. So he walks down and I follow him with a treasure chest. And I, you can't see out of a Vader helmet. You can kind of, and it's like, it bobbles around. So like your vision's always kind of, you know, going around some, you're carrying this thing and I toss it in the bushes somewhere to kind of hide it. It's a treasure hunt. Yeah. Anyways, I get in and like I start walking over and all of a sudden I see these kids just whoo, turn over, all look at me and just do, do, like brave heart start running at me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and these kids, we have stunt sabers, which are made of, you know, high density plastic that yeah. we can fight with. And usually kids have like pool noodles or like really cheap lightsabers. These kids had wooden dowels about an inch and a half thick, painted colors, charging at me. I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. I look over for any parents. They're all just having cocktails in the, in the gazebo. And these kids just charge up to me and start swinging. I'm trying to defend myself. I get a couple shots in the, in the kidneys. And, and anyways, we do this whole thing. And, man, it's just... You just it's survival, man. And you know we got through it. There's many stories like that, but uh, the, the best the best moment because uh, I share I share that experience with you, as you said, is when you're sitting in your car after and you got your headpiece <laughs> off or, and your head's down. You got the AC blast and you're trying to. If my AC didn't work particularly at this car. And you're just sweating and you're just like the only word that is just streamlining through your content is fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you can do it again another day. <laughs> yeah, man. I uh, yeah, we 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 could probably have a whole episode just on that job. But hey, oh, let's, call, let's call let's call that episode right. number 2 for Mr. Phil Cruz. Um Real quick, just real quick. Um, I know you have uh, a film in the works. Uh, I believe yeah. a feature film. Um, yeah. So I know we can look forward to seeing seeing that. And I think it's taking you to another country or something like that. Yeah, we're we're still in the works on that one, but we'll be filming uh, overseas and some some exotic islands. It'll be yeah. a uh, romantic comedy, and uh, it should be. It should be fun. Hell yeah, man. That's, you know, that's been our goal is uh, we did so many shorts and the whole thing was just like, God, let's just do a feature. Let's do a feature. Let's do a feature. And yeah. uh, you're freaking doing it, man. So uh, yeah. super, super happy for your, you and Melissa and your whole uh, film production. Thank you so much for giving me uh, your hour. I know you're a busy man. And uh, yeah, man, freaking love you. And uh yeah. Any, um, anytime just call call me up and chat <laughs> me, and maybe you know, we'll, we'll do, do another one after this whole saga after thing and, and we'll be rich by the time it closes so it's, 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 that's just how the only way logical way it can go so, yeah. You know? yeah and good thing you're not paying me otherwise i would be able to do this i might have to in the future <laughs> <laughs> okay man uh thank you again and uh ciao all right later, all right. Man. Take all care. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already, or, you know, leave a rating and review. Completely up to you. Thank you so much. Until the next episode, ciao.